Welcome, welcome everybody to another great episode of the Beyond Normal podcast. I am your host, Kenny Groom. Uh, we are on season five. I can't believe it. Uh, we have a very special founder uh, today. Her name is uh, Dr. Robin Collin. Uh, she is the founder of Live Loom uh, Creations, which was founded in uh, 2021, uh, November. And uh, her business focuses on uh, artistic uh, products, bringing them to the world in the form of uh, nature photography and digital drawings. Uh, she is a uh, black uh, physician as well as being an artist. And so I wanted to bring her uh, to, to our audience today uh, to, to share her story and let us know uh, what she is building with Live Loom Creation. So let, without further ado, let's bring her to the stage. This episode is brought to you in partnership with Ascentum, which is an award-winning coaching practice that helps high-performing professionals advance and achieve the promotions and pay they deserve. Ascend to powerful heights with Ascentum. How's it going, Dr. Robin? Hi, I'm well. How are you? <laughs> Doing great. Appreciate you being on today. Um, it is a busy season, busy time of the, the year, as always. Um, but, you know, I want to spend a little bit of time uh, allowing you to share your story um, on the platform. Uh, so if you're ready to uh, get into it, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll start out here. So you ready to go? Yeah. Got it here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put that logo up top. Uh, so folks can can see that Live Loom creation. So tell us a little bit about your backstory leading up to you being a founder of your own uh, photography uh, company. Oh, well, thank you so much. I'm honored to be here. Um, a little bit about my background. So I am certified in internal medicine, board certified in internal medicine and pediatrics. I completed my residency training in 2019. And I started working with a large university-based um, healthcare system in the um, Triangle area of North Carolina. Worked there for about two years. And um, the whole process was really difficult for me and uh, de dealt with a lot of burnout, a lot of overwhelming stress, mentally, um, emotionally, physically. And last year I decided to um, step down from my job because I felt like I couldn't do it to the capacity that I wanted to. And it was taking a lot more from me than I think I could allow. Um, and I pivoted into creating this business with Loom Creations, which is like really a passion project of me sharing the artwork and the process behind my artwork that helped me actually just like survive through my medical training, survive through um, working as a primary care doctor. God, I appreciate you, uh, you know, starting us off with that, uh, that big shift. That's a huge shift yeah. uh, for somebody to make. I, I'm curious, like, uh, you know, being a doctor, that seems like a, like a path you're on for a very long time. All right, so talk about like the work leading up to that, like you becoming that doctor, like what did, like how much blood, sweat and, you know, uh, energy did you put into that? And then on the flip side of that, like, what did it feel like kind of making such a big decision? Yeah. Wow. The process was very long. Um, it started in childhood, to be honest. You know, I so thankful and blessed to have a black pediatrician. Um, I was actually one of his first patients. Um, so I had that influence, you know, right on, like from the start. And my, you know, my mother's in nursing. I have an uncle who's a surgeon. You know, my family, a lot of people in the family were in the medical field. So I saw it as something I could do. And as my mom said, I was a kid that loved cartoons. And then like, the show that was on TLC called Real Life in the ER, which was all about like medical mysteries. Like those were the things that I, I loved. Um, so yeah, I, I started then like as a child knowing, okay, I wanna be a doctor. I wanna be like my pediatrician. I wanna be like the people in my family that help. And so, yeah, you know, middle school, high school um, and college is really, well, high school I would actually say is the air, the time point where I got a little more serious with like searching um, for somewhat like mentors, people to shadow. So I shadowed like cardiothoracic surgeons, 
um, ENT, a lot of surgeons, because I had thought I was going to be a surgeon, because that's like what I really wanted to do. Um, so I was shadowing these people to get an idea of their lifestyle um, and to get an idea of like what their work was. And I was actually even going into, you know, the operating rooms with them. And it didn't scare me off at all. I really liked it. I enjoyed it. I also did like a pre-med um, program with the university. Well, actually now it's called Rutgers um, Medical Center in Newark, New Jersey for all like high school kids in the area who are really interested in medicine. And again, I was like, yeah, I like this. I can understand this. So in college, I um, decided to like major in bio and just by happenstance minored in mathematics because I just kept taking a lot of math. Um, but yeah, so I did biology, I did math, and I was doing pre-med courses. And I think to be honest, um, some of the, the stress of like the process started to build up there because the pre-med courses are pretty intense. Um, and the competition is really intense, like getting told like, you probably won't get accepted into any medical schools because um, your scores are not like this or that. Um, but you know, my mother, she really believed in me. So we figured out like the schools that will work best for me. And um, the school that stood out to me was the um, School of Osteopathic Medicine in New Jersey. And that's in South Jersey. And I love that place more than any other place. I was actually waitlisted there. Um, so I did not actually know I was going to medical school until literally a week before their white coat ceremony, um, which is the ceremony that ushers in the new class of med students. Um, at that time, you know, I had rejected um, the waitlist offers from other schools I was at because I was like, this is the place for me. And I was, interestingly enough, um, prior to getting accepted to med school, I was working as a camp counselor and actually had applied to be an intern at this photography um, company that took photos of events in Philly. Um, so to, that's kind of where the photography and the art kind of started like in college. And I was like, oh, all right, if I don't get into med school, I'll probably, I'd like to be a photographer. Um, but I got into med school and I was like, well, I, I don't need to be a photographer at this point in time. Um, so did that four years of that. Um, med school was both fun and tough. I think the beginning was a lot more fun than the last two years, um, I will be honest. And um, that's kind of when I started to do a lot of nature walking, like going outside to deal with stress and taking my photography skills, like literally just using my phone and the camera I had and just taking pictures. Um, and that really helped me feel good like it was like a good reset from when I was like super stressed, <clears throat> excuse me. And um, yeah, after med school, I um, went to residency in Eastern North Carolina at um, ECU slash Vidant. Um, did my four years of residency there because um, being board certified in internal medicine and pediatrics, it's a four year program, sorry. <coughs> My throat's getting dry. Um, it's a four-year program instead of the typical three for just doing either um, separately. And um, I chose that program, to be honest, because I didn't know really what I wanted to do. I knew I loved both. And it gave you, it gives you the option to specialize in so many different fields. Like, so I was like, all right, cool, I have options. Did my four years there. That was really, really stressful. Again, like wonderful part but really stressful parts um, that started to weigh on me. I leaned more heavily into going outside, finding parks in the area that I liked and taking photos. And um, 2019, I graduated. I signed a contract to work with a really great institution. And I thought my life would be easier and better now that I'd be making more money, <laughs> you know? And, um, I knew that going into primary care, I wouldn't necessarily have like, I, I knew I wouldn't be working eight, 80 hours, but I knew I wasn't gonna be working like, you know, 40 hours, but um, it was still a lot. It was on average for me personally, I would be working like 50 to 55, sometimes 60 hours a week and all the duties that I had to do. And um, it was just a lot. And, you know, again, it, there are positives and negatives with 
you know, working at in that institution and also like the my patients, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for all the opportunities and the people that I've met. Um, but it's a grind. It's a heavy, heavy grind. And as you heard from my long spiel, it really started in college, right? The grind starts there and it just keeps mm-hmm. going. And um, yeah, I, my life didn't get much better. And I just got physically, mentally, emotionally like sicker. And so mm-hmm. I was like, wow. Um, the only thing at that point in time and that was making me feel like I was alive and that I could breathe and be myself was the nature walks, the nature photography, um, particularly in the pandemic where I felt really isolated at times. Um, mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. So, nah, that's, that's, like, there, yeah. that's there's, def- <laughs> nah, there's definitely a lot there. And I think uh, you, you sharing your story, I appreciate that. You know, people think, all right, doctors are like, all doctors are like on the golf course, like you know, like the <laughs> on the golf course, like more than they're in the office. Oh, but gosh. you're no, like what you just explained, like especially during like the pandemic, like doctors were like doctors and nurses were like called to action, mm-hmm. like right. And so like there is this like like it's a vital field, and like we got to make sh- like if your doctor isn't feeling good, like that's a scary thought. Like yeah. you just said, mentally, maybe physically, but if your doctor isn't feeling in the right mind, like it doesn't seem like there's a lot of resources out there because your patients are coming to you to fix their problems. I'm not, mm-hmm. I don't know how many times I've gone to the doctor. This is, may sound a little selfish, but ask like my doctor, like, hey, how are you doing? Like how many yeah. times did your patients come in? You're, you're dealing with pediatrics as well, little kids. So it's like, yeah. There, there is that missing element at times, and and like you said, it's a it's a real grind being a doctor, getting to that point where you're tenured and you're making all this money. Like, it's it's one of those fields where they they always show you the pie in the sky, but not necessarily the work that goes into it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, you know, that's I as I mentioned, I'm so thankful for like my medical assistants that I really vibed with that helped me, you know, learn how to be efficient on the job. Um, I don't know if they'll see this, but they know who they are. I love them. And I'm still, you know, I still communicate with them. And then the patients that would ask you like how you were doing, it really, really meant a lot. Cause sometimes that was the only, other than my mom, that'd be like the only person in the day that asked about my well being. Um, Mm -hmm. and so, yeah, I just, it was hard to get a balance because every, every moment was put towards my work. If I wasn't actively in the office, I was reading, I was attending conferences. I was trying to be better, always trying to be better. (laughs) And, um, yeah, that just like wears you out. And during the pandemic, as a primary care provider, I wasn't in the hospital taking care of patients. Um, we're still, you know, expected to come into the office. Some things change. We had some telemedicine. Um, but I think for me, mentally, which was kind of like trippy was that, I'll be honest, I didn't even recognize the seriousness of the pandemic because my work life hadn't changed. Like my day-to-day routine didn't change. I didn't, I joked with my friend, I was like, I didn't even recognize until I went to return something I like home goods and it was shut down. Like the whole plot was shut down. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, and it wasn't like I wasn't reading the news, but I didn't, it didn't click for me until then. And I was like, oh, we're really in a pandemic, you know? And it was weird because things just kept going as normal in a way in the workplace. Like we just keep doing what we're doing. But outside of that, people are dying. My family members are dying. People are getting sick, you know? And I wasn't able to like be near people. Um, my mother was in the New York, you know, New Jersey area as a nurse in the height of the pandemic. So that was like concerning for me. Um, yeah, so that was weird. That was weird. <laughs> so you get to this point, right, where the uh, you you want to make that change uh, for your your own health, for your own personal reasons. 
like how did you go about like like you said your family has a history of people in the medical field and you've worked you put all this time in how did you go about delivering this news to like like you said your nursing assistants your 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 immediate family and how what was that reaction like <laughs> um so gosh it was it it wasn't like an abrupt it was both abrupt and not abrupt like i had been spending months trying to reinvent like what i could provide as a primary care provider um in the workplace and working with you know the team there the administrative team to see how i could tweak what i was doing so i could sustain myself cuz you know i kind of expressed like i'm not happy in certain aspects like this day to day is not fulfilling me i want to try to do this and that um and kind of communicated hey i'm experiencing some burnout like that was the first time i was like oh yeah i really i think i'm burning out you know um and that didn't come to fruition as well as I wanted it to. Um, so I had kind of already decided maybe I need to take some time away. And so I let my closest medical assistants know, like, you know, I'm expecting to probably not be working in here, you know, in the coming year. Um, and full transparency because I do have a video on this on my Instagram. Um, I had made, you know, that formal announcement, spoke with, you know, my bosses, made some, let my closest medical assistants know, but my health, my physical and mental health dramatically declined. Um, and that is where the abrupt stop happened, um, where I was like, yeah, I need to take time off now. Um, and, um, you know, the closest of my family members are aware of that um, and that transition. So I guess that's kind of like what I got to say. Like, no, that make, that, that, uh, I, that's your way of, of handling it. That's a really big decision to make. And I'm not sure, like it sounds like you said, you, you just got out into kind of the, the, the workforce after putting on all this energy in 2019 so you're making a decision like that very early on in your career and yeah. i know i don't i don't typically get into the generations but you know millennials and and the younger generations like this current environment we're in is forcing us to make some of those decisions that we we haven't typically had to make in the past so it was yeah. really cool of you to in my mind to make that decision and, and just make that pivot like not going to be easy right you put on put in all this energy but you know what makes you happy and so you can mm -hmm. go after that and you know that's that's the kind of story i think moving forward we're going to hear more and more people kind of relying on hey i went with what what made me happy um the money stuff will figure out we all know we need money to live and to pay our bills but um that happiness is it's really priceless it sounds cliche um, oh, but, right. but hearing you, hearing you say that, like, that's the, those are the kind of stories, um, that are important for people to hear moving forward. So now you're a business owner, like <laughs> you make that pivot, right? You, you make that transition, yeah. you find out, you spend a little bit of time, you know, figuring out like, all right, what could I do that is like a balance between making me happy and, you know, me, me having some income coming in, right? That's always something we're, we're, we're thinking about. So like, yeah. how did you come up with? Live Bloom Creations, tell us a little bit about the name and like what you were really going yeah. for with, with that. Yeah, um, I guess the really important part I should mention that, cause my story is so layered and complex, even when I try to recall it, it's just like, how did I even make all those decisions and live through that? But in addition, so to the process of me making my transition out of the workplace, cause I was like, I think I can find a path that fulfills me more, right? I had enrolled in a program called Mel Melanin in Medicine. It's run by Dr. Omalara, um, oh, oh, Medimo, excuse me. Um, and she is a pediatrician that um, also, you know, dealt with significant health effects from her, her career, her longstanding career as a, you know, well-known, respected pediatrician. And she created this program for Black women physicians to find their peace, to find themselves, 
and to build um, careers that didn't harm them um, and also, you know, fulfilled them because the, you know, medicine is uh, it's not very diverse, to be honest. So a lot of times you feel isolated. So that was her community. And so I had joined that in the process of making all these decisions and through working with her and all these other, seeing all these other wonderful black women physicians like come up with ideas for themselves of how they wanted to transform healthcare, I started to think about like, okay, what can I do? Like, what do I really like? Um, and, you know, Malara and I kind of brainstormed through that and we talked about like, the very unique thing that I was doing with my nature photography. I actually did a workshop with two of my friends to see like if they, if what I was doing was transferable, like if could someone else appreciate it? And they did. It was really a simple process of me just, you know, providing prompts for them and encouraging them to engage with their environment in a very natural, intuitive, open way and talking about what that felt like and what the photo they took meant. Um, so kind of merging both the kind of uh, psycho, like psychological, physical healing aspect of being in nature with the actual image, which is the memory of what you experienced. And that went well. Um, and so from there, I was like, oh, yeah, you know, I could like, I could make this a thing. Um, so I had originally envisioned it being like a workshop but then I actually wanted to I pivoted and wanted to first show people what I was doing like you can't come to me if you don't know what I'm doing like what am I actually producing um so like that is how Lib Moon Creations came about and as far as the name I had a really generic name and my like lawyer was like oh <laughs> trademark learner is like maybe something a little you know different you know and you don't have to but you know so um, what was the name uh <laughs> easier mind photography but it was just like there are other trademarks that were similar um and so i made the decision to change it and so live loom creations um is like creole a mix of Creole, French, and English, because my family is from Haiti. So lib is like light or free in Creole, Haitian Creole. Loon is moon in French. Um, and specifically, I chose that because the moon is probably, hands down, my most, like, my favorite element in nature. I love the moon. I, watch, I love watching it go through its cycle. Um, so yeah, I was just like, I want this to be about nature that I love. I want it to be about freedom. And then creations was like, well, I'm making creations. Like that's how it came about. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Yeah, that's a that's an awesome story. <laughs> and that's that's a good tip from your lawyer around uh, <laughs> the, like coming up with something that's unique. Something you can put like, you know, you put something on a shirt or something like that 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 stands out a little bit more. Yeah. Um, so that was good for you being flexible there. So um Okay, so you got that now. You 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 you've gone through, you created the business, you've gotten to this point. Like what's something that you like uh an area that you took from your previous experience in the medical field that you kind of taken with you on this journey as a business owner? Like is there anything that has applied um to make things a little bit easier for you? Yeah. Um I think gosh. The one thing that got me, well, there are many things that got me through, like the whole process of being a doctor, but it's just like, I don't want to say like perseverance, but just like that belief that I can do it, like, it, you know, I can, I can do, I can do what I put my mind to. Um, so that was really important in me making the pivot because it was like, well, you know, I could continue on this path and probably not end up in a good place, um, right, where I hope to be, or I can trust myself and God and the universe and try to find a path in this area that brings me so much joy. Like, what would it be like to do something every day that makes me really happy? Um, mm -hmm. So, like, putting that perseverance, that resilience um, into that, like, that's kind of, like, 
what I brought from medicine into like my business, just that the methodicalness of it, the belief in myself to kind of like get through it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So interestingly enough, as you were explaining that, you you threw out the phrase uh, like like probably you put like probably in there, like you'll probably like fail. Like I'm curious, like were you like are you like like you mentioned your math uh, your math minor as well as uh, go, you know um, going through the medical field? Like were you like on the front end, like as you were making this decision, like were you doing calculations in your head? To like figure out your chances. <laughs> no, this is so funny. Statistics is actually the worst, my worst subject in math. Okay, I'm okay, okay. I'm a calculus person, so no. Uh, nah, the the it was, it was very like dichotomous for me. I was like, I could continue on this path and probably not end up in a good place health wise because like my health was declining. And I was not building a life outside of my work. I was like, I can continue doing this, be you know financially comfortable. Like that was very nice to be able to provide for myself and my family. Um, but it was like, I was empty in so many ways. And then the other option was choose this path that's not clear, but allows you to rest, allows you to sleep, allows you to like, just dream and potentially improve your health and find money in another pathway. Like, mm -hmm. I believe that there just wasn't one way that I could support myself and my family. At this point. Mm -hmm. you, you, you threw sleep in there. Uh, I'm going to say <laughs> yeah. this now. Sleep is so underrated. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to throw that out there, let folks marinate on it. I don't know if that's a gem that you just threw out there. I feel like it is, but sleep is so underrated. So yeah. I appreciate you just being able to, something as simple as sleeping an extra hour or two. Oh my gosh, taking a nap. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I yeah. Love my it. brother, my brother is like very into sleep. He has his own sleep startup. And so I've Ooh. learned a lot from him. Yeah. And, um, Shout out to my brother, Josh. And uh, yeah, and I, I, I'll be honest, I dealt with insomnia in college in med, and in med school. And um, that was horrible. Like, it was so horrible. Like, sometimes I didn't know, like, I didn't know the days. I was confused by, like, light and darkness. Like, so, and I just recognized, I was like, yo, when I sleep, I think better. I feel mm -hmm. better. I can do so much more. And so I have always, you know, after I, I handled my sleep issues early on, um, the work of being a resident kind of affected that, but like I knew the importance of it. And I was also in my job as a primary care provider, I was losing sleep. And that's what all, that was another key, that was another important thing for me. I was like, wow, I'm going back into those bad patterns where I'm like sleeping like two, three hours, waking up in the middle of the night and just like anxious to start the day. And I was like, I don't, I don't want that for myself. Um, so now I sleep very well and I feel really good. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, so, so I think at this point, you know, um, I was going to pull up your site. Uh, you, okay. You've got your site laid out in a really good way. Uh, maybe we could dig into, you know, some of the pieces you have. I know you got some pieces to show as well. Um, yeah. So let's pull up your site real fast, just to, you know, showcase the folks what you have, and this is a good way for folks to see how they can tap in with the brand as well. So let me go ahead and pull that up for us. Uh, and so here is the the, the gallery uh, for Live Moon yes. Cre Creations, right? So you want to dig into it a little bit, tell folks a little bit around the, around the focus areas, maybe some of the I don't know the terms, but like the the topics you cover through your images. Yeah. Yeah, so um, this is my gallery, and really what I do with my nature photography, and I talk a lot about that um, on my Instagram, is I go into just local nature scenes or areas, so wherever I'm living or wherever I'm at, I will find a place to walk, and what I'm doing is just experience, experiencing it. It's kind of like uh, Japanese forest bathing, as it's called Shinwin Yoku um, in Japanese, but in English, we call it forest, forest bathing. So it's like 
experiencing the trees, the wind, the smells, the colors. And what I do from there is I take pictures of the scenes that intuitively bring me a lot of peace, a lot of joy, curiosity. So like, that's why I have scenes from New Jersey, like on the beach, as you can see there. And then international travels, um, that's a picture of um, Victoria Falls in Zambia when I spent a month there doing um, medical mission work. And then um, the picture that's highlighted an animal and insects, that's a dragonfly that just landed right in front of me as I was enjoying you know, the botanical gardens in North Carolina. So it's varied. I don't really have one thing that I focus on. It's like what speaks to me, um, like what makes my body and my spirit feel good. So like that, those are the pictures I provide. And I'm hoping that when people look at them, they feel some of that. They get, you know, a spark of curiosity, um, not only appreciating the image, but also thinking, yo, maybe I could go to my local park and just take out my camera phone and try to do that, you know? So. I, think, I love it. I love uh, that there's plenty of topics, like you said, you're just like, you're, you're in the moment. I can only imagine how hard it is to capture a dragonfly. Uh, <laughs> I don't have the patience myself to, to be in photography. So I can't imagine sitting still enough, long enough with my camera to actually take that picture. But that picture right there, that stands out to me. I know you always have deals going on. I see the top banner, the yeah, banner at the top. And so uh, folks need to, you know, who are listening in, make sure you check it out. LiveBloomCreations.com. I know there were some other pieces as well that you wanted to showcase. Did you want to put those on screen as well? Yeah. So thank you for that. Yeah. I'm always having sales and right now running a holiday sale. So please check me out. Sign up for my newsletter. Um, excuse me, my mailing list, really a mailing list. And yeah. So one of the photos I wanted to show is hopefully you can see this. It's one of my favorite photos. It's called The Show. And this is um, a peacock, obviously. And the funny thing is that this peacock is a peacock that runs wild <laughs> in like Apex, North Carolina. Like I saw him while driving um, around the area and um, I was shook. I was like, what? There's a peacock just chilling? And I found out that his name is Kevin. He's well loved in the community. And um, he just roams the neighborhoods and he'll show up on, you know, lawns that where people throw nuts for him. And um, yeah, so it's just one of those things. Like I met Kevin um, like a couple of times. And then this, this, this day, I just followed him and he let me follow him. And so that's the thing. It's like nature is beautiful all around you. And it just does wonderful things. Like who would have thought that Kevin would just be chilling and let me photograph him? But that's one of my favorite yeah, yeah. photos. Yeah, and that's a metal print. Um, so, oh, I should show the back. So you can purchase this photo and many other photos on the same kind of like metal. Um, and then you can purchase it so it's ready to hang. But it's mm -hmm. awesome. Um, and then I have this photo, which is actually quite a popular photo. Sorry, can you see that? Mm -hmm. um, this is called Pond Cuddles. So this was actually taken in um, a little park area right next to my, um, the hospital where I did my residency. I would go to this park like almost religiously three, four times a week after a rotation, like after the day, just to walk and just to like de-stress, decompress. And this day was really beautiful because one, the fall trees, but then I saw these um, ducks cuddling underneath the park bench. And I just thought that was so beautiful. I had never seen that before. Again, just something that I don't have to travel very far to see, but it's there, like beautiful aspects of nature, animals just, you know, doing their thing. But yeah, this one is um, framed and yeah, so you can get my photos framed like so also. But yeah, those were the two images that I wanted to show. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Uh, seems like uh, uh, Apex, North Carolina uh, has some uh, something fancy, some nice uh, living <laughs> going on. If there's uh, peacocks, 
Uh, we only have <laughs> just the here. one, just the one. <laughs> okay, what well, they're feeding it? It seems that the peacock has a name. Uh, I'm used to seeing geese, maybe some ducks, <laughs> but not peacock, a peacock yeah. at all. So a peacock that just roams that sounds really fancy. But like you said, like the stories that you're telling behind the photo, um, I think that really is going to resonate with folks. Um, and like you said, it sounds like, you know, some of these pictures are near and dear to you. Like you mentioned that one with the pond, seeing the ducks and things like that. There's a personal story for you behind that. And so, yeah. you know, always having the story behind the art, I feel like that that's what gives it, you know, even more value. Yeah. Um, and, and, and so I'm excited for folks to uh, check out your site. Um, again, LibloomCreations.com. Uh, check out uh, Dr. Uh, Robin's story as well. It's amazing. We're looking forward to seeing, uh, you know, uh, more and more photography and just creative work from you in general in the future. Um, I think in closing, is there anything you want to leave folks with that that lasting thought um, as we uh, look to wrap things up? Yeah. Um, thank you again for having me. You know, I just want people to understand that this nature photography for me is just not like a hobby. It is a way that I survive through immense stress and the after effects of burnout through my medical training. And I want people to understand that they too can experience like a sense of healing um, emotionally, um, physically from nature and can engage in nature photography too. So I hope to eventually, you know, expand and evolve this business to be able to teach people how to engage with their local nature, like surroundings in an intuitive way, and also tap into the healing that's just like there for us. Yeah. I love it. That's dope. Uh, so appreciate you for coming on and being a guest. Uh, you know, uh, again, just looking forward to seeing uh, more and more uh, folks uh, connect with your brand. And uh, we'll be we'll be watching moving forward to see how, how big you can grow Live Loom Creations. Thank you. Thank I you for joining. It. Yep. Thanks. Thanks.